my name is Pastor Barry Sam, this is Amaka AGK and you are welcome to the Talk with Max. Today I want to really appreciate you for viewing my videos, for watching my videos. I want to really, really thank you for that. Today in the studio with me is a very special friend of mine. Her name is Mrs. Ngozi Wampo, and I am very happy to have you here in the studio with me today. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure, you know, to be in your studio this afternoon. Thank you very much for accepting. You, you thank welcome. you for coming. Always. Yeah. Today and we are going to be talking about how you were able to overcome pain how you were able to overcome adversity at a very um, um, short space of time I know that you went through some pain you know very deep pain you had a loss can you please help me talk about it a bit um, anyways um, you see the thing about pain pain is just pain and when you look at pain from the perspective of someone that is in the world, you know, it's pain and it's pain. You know, it's bound to keep you at a place you don't move. It's bound to, you know, take everything off you. It's bound to get, you know, take you to a place where you feel the world has ended. But I did something, you know, during my period of grief. I had no order but God, I realized that. And I cling to God and I began to pray. You know, I prayed a lot during that period. Though I had this hope that, you know, in the place of prayer, I will pray and things, you know, turns around to my expectation, you know, like have this guy back to life. So I prayed a lot, you know. On my place of prayer, um, something happened. I, you know, I began to hear a voice that says, come, you know, and when I heard come, you know expectations so I kept going I kept going I had dreams and all those dreams were pointing me to come come but I didn't know God was up to something on this side you know on the other side you know that we don't see uh, I, I, I engaged in a, a, a lot of prayers and I also cling to the Word of God you know I read the Bible a lot you know the Bible opened me up to you know a place in the scripture. I think that's Colossians, Colossians 3, 1 and 2 that says um look up to you know things that is up, you know, that is hither, you know, and not things here, you know. If you know I'm resurrected with Christ, you know, and the place of salvation, you know, new birth. Then I should be looking at the place where Christ is seated and not here, right here, where you know this whole thing, you know, is. So each time I look up, I I took I got I got what I called godly distraction. I was distracted from my pain. I was distracted from the incidents, from reality. You know, I I cling more to God. You know, I cling more to the cross. You know, I will pray and I will cry and I will just lay my pain down on the cross and I will say, Jesus, take this pain. Jesus, take this pain. You know, I kept doing that. And I got to a point where I felt a supernatural empowerment, you know, to, you know, you know, to get a, a supernatural empowerment that um, helped me, you know, to. I won't say, will I say cope? At that point, I wasn't coping. I I, I was healing, you know. I got some spiritual empowerment, you know, that healed me, you know, um, from my pain. Because this man, this young man here, was a sweetheart, you know. We were quite close, you know. We were, we bonded from the time we were kids. So it was like a part of me leaving me. And I mean, I was not informed. And there's this saying that said that, um, we are not made with God. I also realized that I'm not made with God. That God didn't have to take excuse from me to do what He had to do. Yeah, exactly. You understand? I even got to a point where I feel. Does it mean I'm proud? I'm not feeling like a child of anybody that says, you know, when they will say barrier, I say, what's barrier? It's not happening. God needs to talk to me. You know, I was joking. You know, and. Um, it took me back to the scriptures, you know, and it also took me to a place in the uh, Chronicles that said that we are all pre-prints, yeah, we are sojourners, yeah. you know, on, yeah. the, on the earth, and our fathers, we are tenants, and I remember my father is no more, so if my father was a 
thing and, and now he's no more. And the same teacher said, life is a shame. That was where I said, God, I've been goofing actually. This life isn't my life. It wasn't even a fine's life. You know, it was yours. It could live at any time. But just give me the grace, you know, give me the grace to embrace it. Thank you very much, Angie. I, I really, really understand where you are coming from because if you have passed through pain, then it will be easy to understand when somebody is passing through pain and, you know, the feeling. I know that when you were passing through pain, people must have been asking, oh, is she the only one that lost somebody? Why is her own? So why is it so difficult? From. Is it not just um, the loss? Is it not just a loss or something? But you know, if you have not passed through pain or been through that kind of adversity, you will be able, you, you won't know what to say at such a point. You will hear people talking arrogantly and then telling you things that you don't even want to hear at that point in time. But you know, I'm really glad because sometimes you know when people pass through pain, the first thing that comes to them is to run away from God and they start asking the question, is there God? Uh, where is my God? And all that. And most of the time they will, um, they turn their backs to God. So I'm really thankful to God that you talk to God, you run to Him in your time of adversity. So th th I would like to know what and what, what encouraged you? What really, really, what was the main thing that brought the encouragement? What made you, what did you see in God that made you know that he is the only one that can help me in this matter? Um, for one, eh, I looked at the body of Christ because there's something my cousin, like you said, there's something my cousin said to me and for me she said that sarcastically but you know I went back and thought it through. She said, because you are not the first person, you're not the only one. No. Okay? Um, was it not this man, this man of God, this patriarch that came for our program, our Bushido program then? Okay. It wasn't a Shiloh program actually, actually, it was an anniversary. Was it not the same man that came for an anniversary and ministered and did all that? So there's the, that he lost his death soul. His life not going on. What is your own? Yeah. I looked at it and I looked at the body of Christ and um, I spoke to a dear friend that is like a mentor because I was kind of confused. I'm like, is there anything I didn't do right? Like, is God offended in me? And she said to me, because nobody is the whole bereavement. And when she said that, I said, this is actually true. I began to look into the body of Christ. I saw some big men of God that lost their dear ones, their wives, their children. You know, even at a young age and all of that. And I said, okay, I'm not the only one. I rather fall into the hands of God than go the other way. In fact, the devil will kill me the first, my first time. <laughs> so I'd rather just stay this way. Yeah. So I just stayed in God because I know there is hope in Him. I know there is hope in God. I stayed in God. I mean, I didn't have any other place to go to. People mocked me. I was mocked like, church on this. Um, church thing people started doing. I mean, this if he has passed on, he's, he's been a church boy in all his life. So where was church when he, you know, died just like that? Mm. But that didn't move me because I, I know God does not make mistakes, and I know that God was in the matter. Yes, I prayed to a point where people began began to call and say, God said you should stop crying. You know, God said He knew why it had to happen. I said, God, who am I that will even start to address my matter? You know, true people that didn't even know, some of them didn't know what happened to me. In fact, I, 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 I trust in God more, yeah. more, you know. I knew he was in the, in the midst of me, you know. Yeah. Thank God, thank God, thank God, really, because um, if, if you're passing through pain and you don't believe that God is in your matter, it's really going to take you a lot of time before you will get, get healed. In fact, it takes so much, um, it, it, it would have taken a long time before you get convinced that God is in the matter. So I thank God for you because that helped you as a matter of fact. It, it made you not to stay so long and immediately you embraced the truth about the bereavement. You started moving forward and you started healing because it's been amazing. When I look at you and then I remember the days when it was on going i i am really 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 amazed i was wondering that how were you going to come out of or out of this being that um, you were so close with him and and all that so but i really really thank god it means the word of god work 
us. And we have, we have, we have this consolation in His word. And also, I believe that the Holy Spirit was there also yeah, to help you. The Holy Spirit was, was my, was yeah. my sweet perfume. Uh -huh. Yeah, the Holy Spirit was just like an atmosphere, you know, that guided me through. Because people will worry for me. My cousins will go like, "Have you checked up on her? Have you called her? What is going to have a problem?" Mm. You know. No, 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 no. She's not gonna have it. She already has a problem. Wow. She already has a problem. Uh, you know, she's going the other way. She's going down. Mm. In fact, this is my mentor. The other day she saw me, my mother in the Lord, and she was like, "Go, oh, no." She was um, she's a counselor by profession. You know, apart aside being a prof, a, a woman of God. She says, "No, you're getting it all wrong." You're going, if you go this way, you know, I don't know where I'm going to pick you. Yeah. And another thing that worked for me was the words of this young man. We're quite close. This is my younger brother. And we talk about a whole lot, a whole lot of things. I remember each time I have issues, he will call me and say, Sister, you know what? Don't get depressed. Yeah. Depression, that's a dark place. Yeah. Jesus is not there. So, and I will tell myself, if I am here, find Jesus and this young man usually will tell me sister you don't go there no matter what guide your peace you don't go there so those are the things that actually helps me too each time I remember that I will say God Holy Spirit help me I don't want to be here I don't want to be in the dark place I want to be in the place where I find Jesus and of course um, my mother Christine she helps me too sometimes she will pray she will scold she will cancel me so I'm really tough cancelling she will say you have to move on you you have to move on, because you have to move on. You can't stay here. Face this reality. It is real. He's not going to come back. Stop praying for him to come back. Then I will get offended in her. You know? Yeah. Well, you man. Naturally. Well, it's naturally. You well, want to know at that time that she was helping she you. She was helping friend. me. Yes. All those works. Yeah. So thank God very. Thank, thanks to the Lord for, you know, surrounding us with people who are positive and people who are helpful with their words at the time. That's a really, that's really a blessing because if you are grieving and you don't have the right people around you, you are in trouble. What helps is what you hear. You know, at um, such a period, you have many people come to you and most of the time, the things they say, they enter into and they, they are into you and they are the things you remember. So it's really a blessing to have somebody who speaks positively into you, who calls you out of your place of uh, of depression your place of grief you know and from that depth because honestly if you are grieving and you are in pain you are having troubles and all that you have lost someone if you are left alone at that time you will drift the person will drift into depression and that's really a dark place like your brother said before he was alive as if he knew you know he already prepared your mind so bless his soul wherever he is thank you very much for watching my video today thank Thank you very much my dear friend it was very nice having you in the studio with me today thank you i really do appreciate it please if you have not subscribed to my channel do well to subscribe also click on the bell button if you have not done so and leave some comments in the comment section i will see you in my next video when we continue on the topic thank you very much